Joined in the studio now by Richard Bacon, TV and radio presenter. Uh, Richard, it's great to have you back in the studio in sad circumstances, yeah, albeit. Yeah. You came to mind very quickly uh, when I heard the dreadful news about uh, Caroline Flack at the weekend. A, because I know that you, you know her, um, but also you were one of the first people I know anyway who did some serious journalism about trolling, what it is, who they are, what types mm. of people they are, what they do, what they did to you. Yeah, Take me back to that. That was uh, a few years ago. It was, I was... Because we used to work on the radio together mm. and I'd just uh, taken over from Simon Mayo on a radio show and there was just a troll who was threatening my life and not in any meaningful way, but, but they were very aggressive messages. And there was, it was one of my, I just, my son Arthur had just been born and was threatening to kill him and stuff like that. So I, I tried to look into it and I made a documentary in which I tried to track them down. And then I spoke to experts and, and it became, it was, yes, it was before trolling is as, as prominent as it is now. It, well, it, I'd never heard of it until you did that. No. Piece. So m it must have been, just under eight years ago, I suppose. And it was, you know, I learned a lot. And I, I think there's definitely something about a combination of access to an audience and anonymity. When you put these things together, sort of a keyboard, an audience, generating a reaction from an audience, then people not really knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. th th those things together bring out a side of human nature that that is, is horrible and is somehow magnified by the process. And I think with... You saw, you saw it with Caroline as well, that there is an instinct in, in so many of us. And, I, and it's not just trolls, to be honest, which is to make very simplistic snap judgments about a situation that's actually really complex and about which we know nothing. And, and often when we don't know the person in the slightest. Yeah. I, I, the thing that really upset me about the Caroline case, and people trolled her, and but, but to be honest, as I say, it was... Lots of people were having these conversations. People I know were having these conversations. There was an element of when she got arrested and there was that incident involving her boyfriend, mm. that people were enjoying it and that they were treating it as, as gossip. And my first thought was, partly having made that documentary, but also, this is, will seem like a bit of a side term, but I've been to AA a few times. And if, there's, if you go to AA, it can't guarantee that you'll stop drinking forever. But there's, if there's one thing you, you do learn from AA, it's... Because it's a process of people sharing stories. Mm. Is when you hear a story like Caroline's, that your first thought is, "Oh well, there's a vulnerable human being that needs some help," and and that is how I think we should all react to those stories. That whether you knew her or didn't know her, and especially if you employed her, you, what you're dealing with is someone who's vulnerable who needs some help. So our starting point should be one of concern and even if you can't empathize with the allegations you can sympathize and and and, it, and beware that they are allegations at that and beware that allegations anyway mm. beware that she's famous beware that she's going to be attacked by trolls and just be aware that she's fragile and and i think if we could it's about empathy isn't it in a mm. way and it's about if we could just stop treating stories as if they're funny if we can stop being judgmental and and piling in on things we don't really understand i think if we just just stop and help vulnerable humans we'll all be in a better place i, I remember in the early days in the training course actually of my career i i uh, one of the questions i asked one of the teachers on the course was why is news local news in particular obsessed with road accidents and mm. he said it's it's the jungle it's I'm up in the tree safe watching the road accident happen. Yeah. I like to hear that the road accident has happened. Not like to, but w when I hear it, I feel safer because it hasn't happened to me. And I wonder whether there's a kind of version of that going on when we see fa famous people in particular yeah. in trouble. We think, ah, for a moment, I'm the righteous one. I'm better. And also because they're famous, it's 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 a strange relationship that or that they've now been brought down because they were famous and they had what you imagine is a sort of gilded existence and now they've fallen on their face. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, there is just an instinct about piling in and definitely finding it entertaining. And, and uh, as I say, I never, I'm not trying to sound better than anyone else, but I am applying my you experience. Are, Richard, of, you are, you <laughs> are. <laughs> all right. Okay, um, go on. Sure. But I, I'm trying to apply my experience of, of, of that documentary, but also of the having listened to painful stories in places mm -hmm. like AA. And I... I uh, it, it, she was obviously vulnerable and I, I I don't know what happened with ITV for example I've absolutely no idea what the response was but I do help I do hope that sure I get why you suspend someone from the television 
But I hope she, I hope she was offered help. She may she may not have taken the help. I don't know enough about yeah. it. But but I, I just hope that she was treated as. A, a vulnerable person well, they, and the, not the, abandoned. The, the statement from ITV and from Love Island talks about her in very dear terms. Mm. So let's hope that was reflected in what they They did. may have done everything correctly. Yeah. I, I simply don't have the information. But you, you, you see what I'm trying to say. I do. And to go back to your documentary into trolling was there any because we're talking this hour about how we control what appears to be an uncontrollable beast the you know the internet online social media it, it did you look to get this person prosecuted? They had yeah, actually, I did. They, they threatened your child for a start. I went to the police and the police couldn't do anything about it because the person was using a server in Canada. And that's often, it's very hard for the police. A, a troll can operate in our country, but if they use a server from a different country, the police have no jurisdiction over that country. And can't find the person. And just can't find them. And so you often can't track the people down. That's the reality. Uh, in the case of that documentary, I think he or she... Um, got frightened because I put it on television which was just something that I could do that other people can't do but it is with trolling it's it's hard to track them down what I hope we can do is maybe just tackle human nature a bit more and I do as I've already said I think all of these things should be lessons in empathy just just stop and reflect on um, the impact of uh, of these stories the impact of gossiping and talking about someone and just remember that uh, you often don't know what people are going through on the inside. That I think, I th to be honest, I would say almost every single adult in the world has got some sort of inner turmoil they're not sharing with you. And, and that these situations tend to be very, very complex. And when someone gets into a mess, all we should do is help them. And can, when you, going back to your troubles all those years ago, briefly, at, at Blue Peter, that was pre-social media, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Was 20, that, 20 years ago. So that was bad enough, I guess, even before social media was coming. But it's a different world now, isn't it? It would have been much worse, I suppose. It would have been, yeah, I guess. Um, and that time you and I were fake sacked when we weren't sacked. Oh, but yeah. But the BBC on, said we were sacked. Eyes, that was fun, it? wasn't it? Yeah. And that, yeah, we did go through that. We that did was go through that. I, I did yeah. find that very gutting, actually. Well, it's because it's also about what is difficult, I think, is uh, when facts are reported about you that you know aren't true and it's really hard to correct them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And you, you've got to be resilient in the face of those. And when that happened to me for the first and only time that happened to me really in any significant way, I was resilient in that I still knew how to fight back, but I felt devastated by it. Yeah. And, and and I think, you know, and, and if you actually take that as an example, that is a relatively, it was a, a tiny small thing, story, really it was a tiny yeah. thing by comparison to to uh, Caroline and many other stories. And yet, and yet, you know from that experience how devastating that was. And actually, you imagine that magnified up and how deeply to devastating the power it of must millions, be. Yeah. yeah, to millions and to someone who was already vulnerable. I notice there's a petition going around which in which they're trying to, I think the Caroline's it's, law. Yes, it's to get a government inquiry into how public figures are are reported upon, and I think it's probably a good idea. I, I, we probably assume that celebrities, by and large, are rich and having a very nice life, but there is something about putting yourself out there um, that that makes you vulnerable and. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea for it. I don't know what the answer is, but I well, think for us to pause and think about it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think celebrities should have, be keen to get your thoughts, I don't think celebrities should have special protection from, uh, for example, if they've no. broken the law and it's in the public eye and on you go. You know, some of it's going to be top, you know, tough around the edges. Some of it will be at straight up and down reporting, but some of it won't be. Yeah. But it's the degree to which that second part, that more brutal reporting of it, is manageable or not i suspect it's not maybe it's not but i think brutal is a good word it is it, it's some of the reporting too brutal loads of the reporting will have been fair and reasonable mm -hmm. um and, and it inevitable was a, look when she you know it was a story it was a public story there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with reporting the story mm -hmm. it's just a question of and it's sort of it's, it's not just the press it's the public it's the trolling it's the social media actually this case takes in the cps but it, it is are we being too brutal to people when they're at their most vulnerable. I think that that's the question. And I think some of the reporting would have been fine and some of it would have gone too far. And just to, just to, just to stop and reflect on how we, just to pause and reflect on how we talk about these people in these moments is, is not going to be a bad thing. Particularly when away from celebrity and limelight, you know, you've got small kids, you know that kids in schools 
are being bullied mercilessly on social media sometimes, particularly mm. as they get older, maybe. Um, it, it, it's, it's as valid a conversation in that arena as it is in the celebrity arena, isn't it? I think it all comes back to empathy. I think, I think, I think it's, it's just that that word is the, the heart of all of these discussions. One thing I learned from that documentary is that the bullying now follows kids home. So if, if you're bullied at school, you go home to your bedroom and you turn on Facebook and the bullying carries on. Before computers and social networks, the bullying only happened. The bullying only happened at you school. You could breathe you somewhere. Could close the yeah. door and go home. And now you can't. And and I think at, at every level, whether we are talking about trolling, whether we're talking about the CPS, whether we're talking about reporting, whether we're talking about bullying following children home, it, 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 in a way, it's all about empathy, and and it's just about somehow understanding that occasionally we need to just take a moment and pause and reflect and think of people as being vulnerable humans coming through inner turmoil and just making sure that we're not making things unnecessarily and unfairly worse. And brutal. And brutal. It's a good word, brutal. It's the right word.